Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's CF Education Day webcast, Pseudomonas Originosa or Pseudomonas. This webcast is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Gilead and Genentech. I'm Kathy O'Malley, your host, a CF respiratory specialist at the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. During this webcast, I will ask an expert about Pseudomonas and what can be done to reduce the risk of people with CF getting this germ. To learn about CF, other germs, nutrition, how to partner with your care center for improvement, and the latest in CF research, watch an archived webcast on the CF Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. John LaPuma. John is a professor of pediatrics and epidemiology and the director of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Burkhold Area Cepatia Research Laboratory and Repository at the University of Michigan. Welcome, John. Thank you. John, my first question, what is Pseudomonas? Pseudomonas is one of a number of bacteria that can infect people with cystic fibrosis. In fact, it is arguably the most common bacteria that infects the lungs of people with CF. Approximately 70 to 75 percent of young adults with cystic fibrosis are infected with Pseudomonas. There are many species of Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the species that is most commonly involved by far and away in infection in cystic fibrosis. How does Pseudomonas affect the health of people with cystic fibrosis? It's quite variable. In general, Pseudomonas infection is associated with a decline in lung function. However, again, some people don't uh, particularly do poorly uh, immediately. Others have a more rapid decline in lung function. We also know that uh, Pseudomonas infection uh, can change over time so that the Pseudomonas that's infecting the lungs can look different in the laboratory. It can become what's called mucoid. And when that mucoid uh, appearance occurs in the laboratory, we see an increased decline in lung function typically. We also know that there are some strains of Pseudomonas that seem to be uh, more associated with a, a greater decline in lung function than others. Where does Pseudomonas come from? Isn't it found in water and drains? Pseudomonas is thought to be in the environment. In fact, if you go on the internet or you read articles, you'll see uh, statements like it's all over the place in the environment. In reality, there are a lot of Pseudomonas species, and they're much more common in the environment than Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The fact is, it, it can be a little bit difficult to find Pseudomonas aeruginosa in the environment. In general, we think that water, soil, are homes for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, we can also look in people's homes, and it's rarely found in homes. Uh, and in hospitals, it is something that is found with some regularity. How do people with CF get Pseudomonas? We think that most people who acquire Pseudomonas infection acquire it from the environment. Of course, acquisition from hospital is possible as well, and from other people who are infected with, with Pseudomonas. If you get Pseudomonas, is there any chance to get rid of it? Well, there is a chance. In fact, young children who acquire Pseudomonas are treated now with pretty uh, heavy doses of antibiotics in an attempt to eradicate the Pseudomonas. And that works for a time, and it may work a few times in a row. But eventually, most people do become infected, and those strategies of eradication stop working. And then we move into strategies that are more intended to suppress the Pseudomonas that we can't get rid of from the lungs. What about people with CF who had Pseudomonas but then have had a lung transplant? Are they now free of CF germs? No, typically not. Although the lungs that they have received are not infected, uh, parts of their body, particularly the upper airway, the sinuses, remain infected usually, and so the new lungs can become infected as well. Can a person who does not have cystic fibrosis but is infected with Pseudomonas, can that person give it to a patient with CF? If a person is infected with Pseudomonas, they can, in fact, give that to a person with CF. But typically, Pseudomonas does not infect healthy individuals. And so it's really confined to people with underlying disease of some, uh, some sort. Uh, burn patients, for example, uh, can be infected. So that is a source of infection. But I want to emphasize that typically, healthy individuals do not carry Pseudomonas that can serve as a source of infection for those with CF. 
In other words, you have to be infected with pseudomonas in order to be at risk for another person with CF. Correct. John, um, I have one last question. Mm -hmm. What would you tell an adult with CF or a parent of a child with CF in order to help them reduce the risk of getting pseudomonas? Well, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation has issued guidelines for infection prevention and control. There are many specific recommendations in those guidelines, many concrete steps that can be taken to reduce uh, the risk of infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa and other bacteria. Thank you, John. You're welcome. This concludes the CF Foundation's CF Education Day webcast. I would like to thank you for watching. John, thank you for answering the questions. Thank you, Rick Boston, the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Genentech, and Gilead for the unrestricted educational grants. And thank you to the CF Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.